the mind can't tell the difference between emotional fear and physical fear. Right, it can't. Right? So mm-hmm. when we're sitting there and we're, we're thinking about a memory from 10, 15 years ago, mm-hmm. and it still has that grip on you, and it still has uh, that the same sort of meat that it used to have, you could draw that into your moment and create a scenario uh, that doesn't exist. I think what happens with panic is that you start to try and do the job that your body is supposed to do itself. Mm -hmm. There's this division where it's like somehow you're not trusting your own biological functions in order to help moderate all the things in your body. Mm -hmm. So you start paying too much attention to your breathing, too much attention to your thinking, too much attention to all those things. You start to tense up, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think that the best way uh, for someone to just organically flow in their life is to just trust the fact that the body can just do those things without you having to worry about it. Mm -hmm. More often than not, we're not thinking about how we breathe unless we're, you know, sitting down to meditation. But Mm -hmm. in those moments, uh, we, we, we make the intention to create a set and setting conducive to, you know, that type of breathing. Mm -hmm. Um, But when you're in a chaotic situation, maybe you're like at a really stressful job and you're starting to tense up, uh, you're responding to your external environment. Mm -hmm. It becomes so easy for somebody, I imagine like an HSP to start over, overly being caution, conscious of Of those things. Yeah. And um, you can interrupt the natural flow of the body that way. Mm -hmm. You can start breathing from your chest and opposed to your stomach uh, yeah. You can start like tensing up and uh, it becomes this sort of vicious cycle when it, when it comes to things like panic attack where there's not a threat, but you start paying really close attention to your breathing and then you start breathing incorrectly and all of a sudden you're not getting enough oxygen and you're feeling that in your body and all of a sudden because you're being hyper aware of what's going on, that creates more anxiety and it becomes this sort of uh, fractal thing of anxiety on top of anxiety on top of anxiety. Pretty soon you're losing yourself to... Mm-hmm. the feeling of cortisol and adrenaline and you're forgetting who you really are. Cause I think what happens with the panic is that we start, we start trying to define what it is that we're feeling yeah. with words. Right. We start trying to say, okay, well, like, is, is there something wrong with my heart? I must be having a heart attack. Yeah. That would freak anybody out. Or I'm, uh, I feel I like I'm going to faint. I, I like can't I'm breathe. Pass out. And then yeah. your mind hears that. Right. And you start convincing yourself that these are things that may actually happen. Mm-hmm. So that's what I mean when I was talking um, in that clip about, you know, you don't want to use your mind in order to combat the mind because the mind believes everything. Yeah. And uh, we do a really good job at overall identifying with the ideas that we have, especially in the moment when we're looking for solutions. So the best thing that you can do is just observe it. And I know it's an easier said than done thing because when that cortisol shoots through your blood, mm-hmm. it's hard to think rationally. Because that fear response, that feeling like uh, impending doom and death, it's like it's a hard thing to overcome. Mm -hmm. You have to remain present and just look at it without judging what it is. Like you're looking at it, you're feeling it without trying to define what that feeling is. I think anytime the body's going through some level of perceived trauma, Mm -hmm. you know, that flight or fight response is there. I think uh, the easy, uh, one really helpful thing for someone going through that is to realize like that it's a biological function that's meant to protect you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we somehow start going to bat with our own bodies thinking mm-hmm. that it's trying to hurt us, but it's, this is a, an evolutionary advantage that we have because it's the, that flight or fight response is the only reason why in the wild you don't get killed by bears. Right. Cause you can just take off <laughs> and bounce. Yeah. You know? So it, it's, it, I think it's, it's learning to identify, you know, physical threats between emotional threats and um, realizing that your body's doing that to help you. It's trying to show you that there's something in your field that you need to pay attention to. And uh, that's perhaps where the work is. 